Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne regrette rien. Ni le bien qu'on m'a fait, ni le mal. Tout ça m'est bien égal. Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne regrette rien. C'est payé, balayé, oublié, je me fous du passé, avec mes souvenirs, j'ai allumé le feu, mes jagrins, mes désirs, je n'ai plus besoin de balayer mes amours, avec leur trémolo. Balayé pour toujours, je repars à zéro. Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne regrette rien. Ni le bien qu'on m'a fait, ni le mal. Tout ça m'est bien égal. Non de rien, non, je ne regrette rien, car ma vie, car mes joies, aujourd'hui, ça commence avec toi. Ok, thank you, thank you, <laughs> it's me, Ingrid INFP, and um... I don't know, I felt like singing today. <laughs> um, that was Edith Piaf. Non, je ne regrette rien. Um, I want to tell you guys that I um, had a discussion with a doctor that I was having trouble with last week. And I talked to him together with my boss. Um, it didn't lead to much because he doesn't listen to anything. But... I don't regret anything, just like Edith Piaf doesn't regret anything, <laughs> okay? Um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about, like, how, how comfortable INFPs are with emotion and with passion and big outbursts. Because we aren't really comfortable with a lot of FE shows of emotion, but I think that we like seeing people being their truth selves. So I wanted to tell you guys about um, my ISFJ friend and how we were watching different movies together. And uh, we watched The Square, which is a really disconcerting movie, but really well done movie. The Square is uh, won the Cannes Films Festival and uh, was um, it's a Swedish film, and it's um, it's really really good. It's really thought provoking about class differences and what makes us uncomfortable and that kind of thing, and what is art. Um, so I highly recommend that movie. But then we ended up watching a horror movie because it's soon Halloween, and. At the end of the movie, I was telling my friend that, oh, wow, um, we were sitting on the sofa and I was like, oh, wow, this wasn't really like a regular horror movie. It was actually pretty deep and sad, you know, it's about a boy who sees ghosts and um, it terrifies him. Uh, but then this uh, psychologist who has previously taking care of a boy who he failed by not listening to him properly and now wants to do well by this little boy and he wants to save this little boy from his trauma, I guess, and, um, and his demons. And he ends up taking kind of like a fatherly role. And my ISFJ friend, um, his father died when he was 18, a year before we met, the first day of medical school. And I, the first time I met him, 
I, I knew that something, that he was going through some grief. Him being an ISFJ, he was pretty iffy. I could tell that he was an introvert, <laughs> like first time I met him. But he was pretty, he was putting on the front of like being iffy, uh, you know, very caring, very sweet person. And I just love ISFJs and I love my best friend. And it was only after a few weeks that, um, well, I, I found out that um, his father had died. And it was only a few months later where I was talking about my synesthesia, which we like going full circle on this channel, right? We like going for full circle into the, um, my start of the channel. The star I started this channel by talking about my synesthesia and personality color. And I could tell from the color that I associated with him um, that he was going through uh, some grief. And I could see the, that there was some something that hurt his heart. Um, and he broke up crying. Interestingly enough, I'm the person who cries all the time. But interestingly enough, he's he broke down. He was the one who broke down first uh, when we first met. Since then, I've cried multiple times in front of him, and like it's kind of how I process things. Um, but he's always very controlled about it because, well, he's a man and he hasn't been taught to, you know, show his emotions. Um, and strangely enough, I, I had some weird premonition about what was going to happen a few days ago. I had a dream that my friend broke down crying for apparently no reason. And I couldn't figure out why he was crying. But I figured, like, yeah, well, he's, we've gone through a lot through medical school, and also his dad died 11 years ago. His dad was a, a doctor in a small town. So a lot of my friend's identity has been built around that, because he's taking kind of over what his dad did, being a, like, a doctor. And he's going into geriatrics, because he wants to take care of people who are at the end of their life. He wants to go into palliative care. Um, so he wants to make sure that people did not die in the same way that his dad did of a melanoma when he was around 53 or something. Um, so he, when we watched that movie, he... Like, when we ended the movie, I was like, oh, this is a, such a deep movie. And then I turned towards him and I noticed that he was crying and he left the sofa to get himself a cup of tea. And I said, are you okay? And he was like, yeah, well, it reminds me of my dad. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, my friend is very religious, but nowhere near as religious as his mom got when... Um, her husband, or my friend's dad, passed away. Uh, she got really, really into religious things. Um, my friend grew up in southern Italy, so there is a lot of Catholic... Uh, he, he had, had a Catholic up upbringing. And so this movie um, reminded him of something about his dad, I guess, because of the fatherly figure and the poor little child who is alone in the world seeing all these ghosts. And my friend said, and I think that it's because we INFPs can really bring out the emotions out of people, like their true selves. So I, I don't think that he would have told anybody else. Um, he's okay with me telling you guys, but, uh, um, 
he told me, I hope that, I, I pray that he's there, that he's a ghost and watching over me, um, but he's still there in his heart, um, like in my friend's heart. And I said, yeah, well, of course, you know, if that's what he believes, I don't believe in God or, or ghosts or anything like that. Um, but obviously that's what he needed to hear at that moment. Um, and that's when he started crying in a very, very intense manner. Um, like uh, he had no control over his legs or over anything. Um, he kind of crumpled down to the floor. Um, and I asked him if I could give him a hug and he like nodded through all the tears. So, um, I, I held him from behind, you know, and while I was hugging him, It's kind of, a, there's kind of a certain sense that you're so present that you're not present at all. And I think I kind of dissociated. Um, I, I don't have a lot of experience with dissociation, but there are certain periods, certain times that I've um, been there, but not really been there, you know. Um, so I hugged him and I shushed him and I like rubbed his back and said all the right things, I guess. I was like, it's okay, these things come in strange ways, you know, and I, like cry it out and all of these like, you know, soft words for, for people. Um, but in my mind, I was just thinking like, how could I have such a premonition about this, you know? It's not like, I'm not really a person to get premonitions in the way that my INFJ, ENFJ friends uh, do, you know? Um, they, they, they truly see, like, predict what will happen. I mean, I know that they won't describe it in that way, but that's kind of how it feels like from the outside. Um, for me, I just, I just think that I can tell the emotional atmosphere. I don't know what exactly is going to happen. Like, I didn't know that we were going to see this movie and that was uh, going to be so triggering for my friend. I had no idea what the Sixth Sense uh, movie was even about. Um, but I had a sense that my friend was in a weak spot. I can often tell when people are angry at me, but I can't really figure out why sometimes um, when it comes to people that are close to me. I could tell that my mom uh, was going through a rough time even though she wasn't telling me anything. All we've done is had phone calls with each other uh, and I was figuring out that something was wrong and then uh, a few months later, I uh, found out that, oh, it was because her brother uh, ha had uh, pancreatic cancer. And I knew that deep down that something was wrong, but I didn't know what. So I knew that my mom was going through a tough patch, but I didn't know what, what it was that was tough. I assumed that it might have been uh, because my brother was having a tough time, and so my mom absorbing that. But I was thinking, like... She's taking this really seriously. Like, th there must be something. And she would be especially careful about talking about her own dad, who also had pancreatic cancer, and who, well, died of it. My uh, uncle, had, like, is f cancer free, which is like, he's only one of the one or two percent of people who has had pancreatic out the cancer and survived like three months after diagnosis you know he, this is six months after diagnosis and he's um he's still alive which is amazing um he's he's technically cancer free uh, i think that he still has one round of chemo or something 
Um, but so I could I can tell that certain things are affecting the people around me, but I can't really piece the pieces together. I can just come up with with theories. So when I had that dream, I was like, hmm, I guess that my friend is having a tough time at his job or um, I don't know why, like what it is that is, but it ends up that, oh, it was because of that. It was because um, he's been thinking more about his father lately for some reason. Um, for me, what's been going on in my personal life is that every year at this time of year i it comes closer to halloween and um i was sexually harassed on halloween um so that it's been nine years since uh this happened but it still affects me and so every month of october i am extra um sensitive to things and more, every year, I'm like, what is it that's going on? Um, for those of you who have periods, um, sorry about uh, the change of topic, but it's kind of that feeling before your period where like suddenly everything feels wrong, everything, like if, if you have PMS, you're like, uh, why am I crying because I uh, like dropped a glass of water on the floor, you know? why am i crying for nothing why am i so all over the place right now and then a few days later you get your period and you're like oh okay like happens to me every month and every month i'm like oh yeah of course <laughs> so that's kind of how it feels like for my premonitions it's like i'm like i know that something that that something is off I don't know what it is, but I guess I'll find out in a few days, you know, or weeks or months. And so I can tell certain things and then I, and I'm like, this makes no sense, you know? So I guess it is a little bit like using NI. I think that because we have NI as critical parent, we, we see things, but then we're like, nah, that can't be true. There are tons of other possibilities. It's like, you know, maybe I just had that dream because I had my medication. Or maybe I just had that dream um, because I've been worried about my friend lately. Or maybe, you know, maybe he, he's just crying because he uh, missed his train, you know? Or I don't know. I'm just like, there are many reasons, but like, the main speculation that he was sad about his father was the truth. And so it kind of, all of these ideas, they converge towards one thing. Because the way that he was crying in my dream was kind of the way that he was crying uh, when we first had that conversation about him, the synesthesia about him, his grief, and his dad. And so... We can see a lot of patterns as INFPs. It's just we have a hard time sorting through what is the actual thing that is going to happen. We can see so many possibilities of like all the things that could be happening. What if, what if, but it's like converging towards a truth it is not a strong point. That is, that is the INFJ, the INTJ's strong point. Um, ENTJ's and... Um, ENF J's as well, but to a lesser extent. So my boss, he's an ENTJ. He can tell like, okay, like the route that's our, that my workplace is going to take. Like he can always, he's always looking at the future and like what is going to happen. Um, and so I think that NI is not really in feelings. Because um, an eye is an internal perceiving function and it needs an extroverted uh, judging function in order to like work uh, in the function stack. But I think that as INFPs we have we have the power to use our NI if if 
if we just see it as like a combination of Fi and Ne, because Ne, if you funnel it through Fi, you'll create a kind of facsimile of an Ni um, in some way, because like you'll you'll feel all of this emotion about a certain thing, like you care so much about your friend, then you see that your friend is, well, not doing so well, or you, you get worried about something, and you pick up something, and the NE just goes wild about all sorts of things, and then your FI is like, what would make, make most sense for this friend to be worried about, you know? And because we've sorted out through all the emotions of ourselves, but also of all of our closest people, we know the, the ways that they express. Because we have the SI li library of all of the things that have happened to us, so we see like a model of each of our friends, each of our family members, and like, oh, this is how my dad reacted when um, I was late. You know, my, my dad is an ISTJ, so he despises lateness. And so it's like, oh, he acted this way. And so that must be why he got mad at me that one time, you know. And so it can lead to a lot of bad spirals, but it can also lead to our heroic kind of spirals where we are the ones to save the day. Um, not saying that I saved the day when I was with my, my friend, but I think that he couldn't be so emotionally vulnerable around anybody else, even his family. And that's why he, he felt safe, so he could, he could cry with me. And I mean, when I say cry, he was, it was, you know, manly emotion that you, <laughs> that is somehow worse because it is so bottled up for years and years and years. And it was pretty scary. And so I think that that's why I kind of dissociated from it because it was a lot to take in. Um, I, I don't think I've seen anybody in, in such throes of emotion uh, unless we count my, my psychiatric patients. <laughs> but I mean, somebody who felt so safe around me that they could express that and that we could still be friends after that. They wasn't awkward afterwards. Um, that's the mark of a true connection there, you know. So I think that, also I think that ISFJ and INFP is a really good combination if uh, the ISFJ is open-minded and if the INFP doesn't mind a little bit of nagging, <laughs> okay? A lot of uh, ISFJs are not a good fit for INFPs because they're close-minded and because they can be, uh, in a certain extent, a little bit um, confused by our INFP ways. But the ones that do accept our INFP ways are just like the most loyal, the most wonderful friends that there is. So I went to give that shout out to my friend. And I think that it's good that we can uh, express our emotions, that uh, there is no shame in that, that we can be authentically ourselves. And I, don't, I think that it's important for INFPs to remind ourselves that we are intuitive. Because often when, like, the conventional use of intuitive is an I, which is um, the, the prediction kind of thing, the spiritual, uh, like, out of this world kind of thinking. But we've got that too. We've got that too. Even if we have an E, and it seems... Because SJs have any, so they can understand any in a certain way. Um, but, but because we have any higher up in the stack, we also are quite strong at NI. It's just that we are kind of confused by it, and we don't really understand it. And 
That's why it's in the critical parent role, because we just don't really get it. But I think that it's a way for us to... Like, and I will usually come... It's not something that you can practice. It's just something that will come out of thin air, it, it feels like. But when you think about it, it's actually you connecting the patterns and coming to the most reasonable conclusion. Um, so yeah, I'd like to hear about uh, INFPs, like how they think that NI works. Because um, I think that INFPs, we, we cover everything in our emotion. And so it's impossible for us to disconnect from that. And so understanding NI is, uh, is kind of a strange experience because we couple everything with RFI. But uh, if you guys have any uh, um, interesting uh, input, um, I hope that I could put you in a slightly better mood by, uh, by having a song at the beginning of the video. <laughs> uh, because it was kind of a dark experience that I experienced with my ISFJ friend. So um, have a great day, everybody. Bye.